Republican Congressman Matt Gates. He sits on the House Judiciary Committee as well. Um, so, Matt, good to see you tonight. Are you disappointed that, uh, that you're not going to get to question William Barr tomorrow? I am. We do have a lot of game tape from William Barr from his many hours in the Senate today, and I find it a little comical that my Democratic colleagues would say that it's not enough that Bill Barr went before the Senate Judiciary Committee, which has three presidential candidates from the Democratic side on the committee, and it's not even enough that Bill Barr offered to come to the Congress and answer questions under the five-minute rule, and it's not even enough that after every member got to ask their five minutes of questions, Bill Barr was willing to submit to an additional hour of questions so long as those questions were asked by people who were elected and serving in the Congress, not some hired gun brought in for that specific purpose. Martha, the only other time I can see where the House Judiciary Committee has had staff asking questions in an open hearing is during an impeachment proceeding. And that's really the whole point here. The Democrats want to have impeachment in drag. They sort of want to dress up this deal as impeachment without having to invoke that term because they know that it will excite a lot of the body politic and certainly rally people to the president's side. Well, you know, I do want to ask you about this, this one area of questioning today um, where from the last testimony, here's what Bill Barr said about whether or not he, uh, whether or not he thought that Robert Mueller supported his conclusion, his finding. And this is from the last uh, round of questioning. Watch this. Did Bob Mueller support your conclusion? I don't know whether Bob Mueller supported my conclusion. So he said that, but but as it turns out, he'd gotten the first round of, of pushback from Robert Mueller. There were two periods of pushback from Robert Mueller two weeks before he said that. Does that seem odd to you? Pushback is something very distinct from not supporting the conclusion. I've yet to see any evidence that Robert Mueller disagrees with the conclusory bottom line upfront statements made by the Attorney General. What Robert Mueller seemed to be objecting to was the lack of context and additional detail. Martha, I know a lot of authors who've had their books made into movies, and I don't know one of them that likes the movie version of their book. And so likewise, I would expect that there might be some pride of authorship with Robert Mueller where he didn't appreciate another person making those statements without the full body of their work. But really, how is this not a moot point? All of America has all 400 some odd pages to see and go through. And so why are we arguing over conclusions that no one disputes over a report that now everyone has read? I, I, I think that's probably the way a lot of people look at it at this point. They, the entire report is out there, um, except for some very light redactions. And everybody in America, which I think is good, uh, can, can read it. Um, in terms of where this thing goes next, I know that there, there were some questions about uh, doing a leak investigation because there were a lot of things that ended up in the press that, you know, should not have mm -hmm. ended up in the press, and they're, they're going to investigate that. But I also thought this was interesting in terms of what Bill Barr said about why he decided that he had to put out the principal conclusions, sort of the, the headline of the report, fairly quickly. Watch this. I made the determination that we had to put out some information about the bottom line. The body politic was in a high state of agitation. Former government officials were confident, confidently predicting that the president and members of his family were going to be indicted. Who and what do you think he was talking about there, Matt? I don't know. I do recall that during that time, there was a great deal of pressure on the attorney general to tell the American people what had happened because we all knew that Robert Mueller had submitted his report and everyone was waited with bated breath to determine what the result would be. And so as the attorney general was going through the redactions, we even heard people on the left wrongly predicting that Barr would redact a huge amount of the report, that we wouldn't see anything. Well, he released 92 percent of the report. And so I think that those sort of, you know, crying wolf saying that the sky is falling. These outlandish claims by Democrats were proven false, and the attorney did, general did just what he should have done. Say, look, yeah. Bottom line up front, here is the verdict. No one's going to get prosecuted over this investigation. Now, let me get to the business, not of releasing this in dribs and drabs, but get as much of it before the American people as possible. What more could we have asked for? Well, John, John Brennan was saying that indictments would be coming down in days. I wonder if, the, if he may be one of the former government officials that uh, William Barr felt he needed to... Uh, set straight on, on what the actual well, there'll be an IG were. report. There'll be an IG report coming in June that will illuminate yep. on that. There'll be one before that that will illuminate the, the illicit ties between the FBI and the media with leaks and illicit gifts. We'll be watching. Matt Gates, thank you very much, Representative. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you.